Welcome to another episode of my Motortown playthrough. We have a few more patches behind us for the new update. And what can I say? Things are coming along quite nicely. I think it still has a ways to go, especially when it comes to the track making, because while a few things are now working a bit better, um, stuff like fine editing is still something that you need to do in a text editor, and that's really not amazing. But yeah, starting out with, we have the Lobo again. The decals here, by the way, done by Milk. I just found this on the, uh, on the workshop and I thought, yeah, this is looking pretty nice and I have no idea what to do with this vehicle on my own. So yeah, for this one, I just went with somebody else's tune and I mean, look at it. I think I picked wisely. <laughs> The reason we are at the tuning shop today is because the last few updates actually put in a few things that I suggested. For example, when you are browsing the workshop and you are looking at um, some tune, you can now actually, instead of having the install button here, it now says configure, still does the exact same thing. However, when it said um, install beforehand, a lot of people just wouldn't click on it because they didn't know what to expect. It always seemed like this would be the final step and now that it says configure, it's more clear that afterwards you get into the um, uh, into the screen where you can actually configure which items you want from uh, whatever tune you just downloaded. Since I don't want anything, I can still go back and this allows people to also just check out some stuff and know that there's a whole nother um, menu coming which is allowing you to really pick and choose what exactly you want from it. And yeah, of course the one that I downloaded should also be somewhere around here. Just to give some credit if I can still find it. I think it's um, this one here, uh, Milk TRL. And yeah, what can I say? It's looking pretty amazing. That's why I got it. But enough about this, let's uh, talk about a new piece of content. We've actually gotten a trailer for the Lobo. But the Lobo, of course, can also take any um, regular size semi-truck trailer, I mean the long ones, but the short ones uh, primarily for the, um, uh, for the Limousi semi. But this thing now also has its own trailer. So let me see if I can find it. It's even called the Lobo Van. And I think for this whole thing we need to get into the um, history of the Lobo as well. Because this thing is actually based on a real life prototype. The Steinwinter Supercargo 2040. And that thing, I mean it looked pretty much like this one minus the awesome decal work. And yeah, it was meant to be a new type of semi-truck, just to, uh, to F you. Uh, first up, um, just be able, be able to take the regular semi-trailers um, uh, as well, but also for use of its own type of uh, trailers. And the, this trailer is actually one that came along with a prototype. In the end, neither of those went into civil production because this thing is kind of dangerous and not all that amazing. But for this game, it's it's pretty nice. It's pretty fun. But yeah, the idea was that overall, due to regulations, the entire consort consisting of um, the um, semi-truck and trailer could only be a certain length. And since all the other semi um, trucks had uh, the cabin up in front, very high, that meant that the trailer could only be so long. But if you have a semi truck which is only existing below the trailer, the trailer can of course be the entire length of whatever is allowed. So this is what we have here now. Also this thing, like in real life, comes with quite a few doors. We have um, two on the side in the back and also two in the front and I've done the testing 
it doesn't seem like the thing is going any quicker if you open both the front and rear doors. It doesn't seem like it does anything for the drag. So, um, yeah. That's sadly not how that works in game. But yeah, this thing can house up to 10 pallets from what I've seen. I mean, I mix different sizes because it's really hard finding a place that has uh, 10 pallets going to the same uh, point. <clears throat> but yeah, it's now a um, really high capacity vehicle for um, whatever regular type of cargo you want to transport. Honestly, I'm still not the biggest fan of it. It's not really driving all that well. I'm considering to maybe get a second Lobo, which I would then tune up for um, cargo transportation in particular. The one I have right now has more setup for racing. And there's actually going to be a Lobo event uh, coming up pretty soon. So yeah, um, this might be why it's not really working out too well, but it's overall just a bit weird. Also, the front and rear axle on the trailer actually um, steering. So you can see the wheels are not straight. This is not from damage, this is actually intended. But yeah, theoretically I could load up quite a few um, items in here. There is a lot of space and we can actually put four planks um, right next to each other into this one. And I hope they fix the bug where right now it's limited to six overall with uh, plank stacking. The same as with any other trailer. It should at least support eight. So um, four on the floor and then four on top of those. They actually fixed the bug which I've been talking about for a long time with plank stacking rewards because on regular trailers that used to go up to 9 in a testing version then was cut down to 6 and it's still 6 as the maximum but the problem before was you would get a reduced reward for that because the game internally was still thinking you could stack up to 9 and with how cargo scaling is working Basically, if you can load up to 6 and you load up to 6, that's a higher reward than if you or if a game thinks you should be able to load up to 9 and then you only load up to 6. In both cases, you transport the same amount, but in the second case where the game thinks the capacity should be higher, it's only going to give you a lower price per item. But yeah, that's been fixed. We at least now get the full um, 6 out of 6 payout and I think that should be worthwhile again. As it's just the regular way it should be paying out. <coughs> but for this trailer it's really not that amazing because yeah, it should have a higher capacity due to the additional um, space in there. But yeah, so much about um, this whole thing. Again, I will maybe try and get another, another semi-truck for this whole thing. Just to see if I can optimize the, just the whole way I handle this um, entire uh, situation. But in the end, right now, I'm leaning more towards eventually selling the trailer again. There might be a few others in the future from what I've seen. There has been a suggestion on Discord to add like... I think it was just a flatbed trailer or something that might be coming. I've also seen concepts for other trailers like for... Um, a Lobo specific... And I mean this is for the real life version of the uh, Steinwinter. A specific... What was it? 60 foot long uh, container trailer. So that would be good for either one 40 foot trailer um, container and one 20 foot container or three um, 20 foot ones. Or also a similar length uh, logging trailer. From what I've seen um, mentioned by Scaleman, those should not be coming to the game because they were never built. Only existed as. <coughs> as concepts on paper and I mean you gotta draw the line somewhere. 
Otherwise, my next suggestion for a trailer would be having one that's even longer than this and having a lobo at both the front and the back, <laughs> requiring two people to tandem uh, truck this whole thing. But yeah, that's really neither here or there, so I think a few more trailers might be coming. But right now, from what I've seen, if it's just for regular cargo, then I don't really care for it that much. Most of the regular cargo doesn't really pay that much to begin with, and as I mentioned, especially with, um, uh, with a higher capacity um, large cargo items, there usually isn't a high enough amount to make it worthwhile. Also, this thing really suffers on um, inclines and that kind of thing. I got stuck in different farms around the place a while ago, just testing this whole thing out. So, yeah, I don't know. It's fun as a race car. I really wish we could remove the fifth wheel and just um, put on a massive spoiler in the rear. That would be nice. But yes, yeah, so, um, semi truck. Eh, I don't know. It's a neat concept, which is nice to keep alive in a game like this, but it's not one that I care for. So we'll have to see if it's gonna stay relevant in the long term. I think if we actually would get the um, uh, 60 foot container trailer, at that point I could see myself um, trying this a bit more often. Just getting one more cont uh, container up there. That would be worthwhile, but with the other stuff, it's just, if it's more options for the regular cargo, not really for me. And honestly, with how much I talked about other uh, types of semi-trailers which we could still get and we should get, it's kind of... I'm not the biggest fan of them doing something like this right now. Just starting... Uh, potentially a whole other archetype of semi-trailers while the other ones are not fully um, uh, filled in yet and yeah stuff like this you will get some scraping noises so yeah I don't know I will try a second Lobo just to see if it works out and if I end up selling it I mean I have the money here so I might as well but yeah, let's see if we can actually get a few pellets from here. Um, yeah, not really looking all that nice. I could get more stuff here and maybe I should really focus on getting some of these places up and running with more inventory. But <laughs> without it, uh, this thing really is kind of lacking the point it was made for. <laughs> Okay, anyways, enough about this. Let's get back to Gang Yang and let me show you guys what I've been working on. I finished the circuit that I showed off, I think, in one of the recent episodes. So let me grab a good vehicle for this. Let's actually go by recently used. I still hope they will eventually... Um, rework this whole list so that uh, campies and AI uh, used buses are not here anymore because this is kind of annoying but yeah I kind of reworked a few things oh, I actually need to repair this real quick so we can actually have a look at the finished version of um, the um, Gang Yang circuit I'm trying to get this approved on the TWL server for events. There have been a few people that actually went through most of the past events from what I've seen, if not all of them, and just added a lot of tracks real quick and the stuff is pretty decent. But from what I've seen they didn't go into the whole text file editing thing to make some checkpoints wider, which I did for this track and I think that's definitely um, a few improvements to be had by doing this. But yeah, let's take a look at the event. Let's go into edit and I think I have it already in the clipboard. Yep. So this is the track now. Ignore some of the um, 
uh, suggested line going a bit weirdly. <laughs> this is what you get when you put some checkpoints into the middle of the um, road instead of where they are supposed to be. But yeah, we can now confirm this, maybe go for two laps and start right away because we are already in front of the um, gate here. And yeah, stuff like this, just having the um, turn off checkpoint here a bit diagonal, it's just making things so much easier to see. I also made sure to expand the width on most of these going around the um, part with the um, white um, sidewalk over here. You're not really supposed to be on there, but sometimes in the race it's not avoidable. And in the end, it's too bumpy to really give you much of an advantage, so I don't mind people going on there. But it would kind of suck if they missed the checkpoint because due to an incident or something, they just had to go a bit wider. So I think this is a good compromise. And next up we go back onto the ring road. Well, if I got the corner correctly, that was a bit of a slide up here. So, um, a more slight of adjustment in angle here, but still noticeable. This one also being a bit uh, widened. And here we, of course, uh, turn off to the left, if the bus allows us to. And then we are almost on our way back to the starting line. Another widen checkpoint over here, and the last ones are as well. There's no real shortcut potential here, but I thought it would be a bit uh, nicer for people to have maybe an extra meter or something on each uh, side. So that's what I tried to do there. I mean, I think it's more than a meter, but uh, yeah. It's not so stringent on the very edge of the asphalt, and I think I quite like it. That's the start-finish line, so let's quickly do a second lap. And yeah, one of the improvements to the um, whole event uh, feature is that we can now actually see the next checkpoint up ahead, which has a white outline. But yeah, for uh, more dense circuits, like part of this one here, it's working out pretty well so that the next checkpoint doesn't uh, jump up as a surprise. And yeah, I've been tinkering quite a lot with um, this whole thing. There's been a post made by Lama on the uh, Motortown Discord. And they just went in depth about how to do the entire text editing, which value adjustment does uh, which thing and this is what I've been using in order to um, wrap my head around this entire ordeal here. This entire track here is basically my um, <laughs> my testing ground for everything, just figuring stuff out and the one thing that I cannot figure out is this damn corner here. To be fair, this car has weirdly um, weak brakes sometimes. Sometimes it feels okay, but sometimes you just cannot get it to stop. And yeah, while the adjustment is a bit tedious, having to export it into a text file and then doing manual work, not seeing the um, effect of what you're doing immediately, it's still nice that we can do this at all. And I think I've gone, I've gotten a bit uh, quick at it after the first track. I also made a little um, cheat uh, sheet which just summarizes all the stuff. It's also on the um, Motortown Discord on the same uh, guide for the whole uh, editing thing. <coughs> so once you know what you do, uh, uh, what you need to do, you can easily just look at the, um, at the screenshot that I provided and then go through there. Otherwise, having to read back through the text is a bit um, tedious. 
But yeah, definitely shout out to Lama because otherwise I would have definitely struggled especially with the rotation because that's working out a bit weirdly. But having, having everything set up, it's actually um, decently quick adjusting the, uh, the checkpoints and everything. <coughs> Being able to do so in-game would still be better, so I'm hoping that's going to be the next step. Otherwise, I've also seen um, North Hopper, who is uh, one of the moderators on the Motortown Discord, mention that if we don't get the option to adjust checkpoints in-game, he might actually go and just uh, write a little program to do that a bit easier. And yeah, that would definitely be a step up from the pure text editing. But preferably we would just get it in game, but we'll have to see what comes along there. Anyway, so thing is, I didn't just do this track over here, I also have another one to show you guys actually in the quarry. Yeah. I'm of course, uh, of course a suspect, cannot teleport, and I can't even see the police around me. Like, seriously, where is that guy? Ah, coming around through the back here. Let's see if I can get find uh, this time around. I had my problems in the past where they would just drive past me all the time. Always refreshing my wanted meter but never allowing me to deplete it. But yeah, the quarry, it's just... <laughs> it's a rally racer's uh, sandbox in the end. And I absolutely love it. Also, while here, I might as well show you guys the second uh, Neo that I bought. Upgraded it to be a Rally Cross version. So it's a bit higher off the ground. It goes a bit wider, has the wider fenders and all of that, a complete Rally setup. I still need to improve the decal work on both of them. This one is just a basic one, which is now available at the uh, tuning shop. So this is not even from the workshop. But yeah, with how smooth um, all the dirt roads here are, we can just uh, use the regular one. Although, you know what, since the other one... Nah, let's go with this one. The other one has um, off-road tires. This one has uh, high-level road tires, so the drifting should be a bit more fun. Also quickly refreshing this stuff here because I just got I need to do that all the time. So let me quickly grab the um, track from my uh, from my notepad since we still cannot save them in game, and I hope there's gonna be another feature that will be added before this goes live. Having to do the notepad stuff, I mean, it works, it allows people to share the stuff, but in the end, it's it's not amazing. Okay, so let's edit the track, just import the other one. Here it is, in all its glory. And, okay, I'm gonna go for one lap. Let's mark it as ready, because we still need to drive to the starting line. I would like to have my um, starting line somewhere near a place where we can at least spawn in vehicles, but in this case, I mean it's still reasonably close by. It's just not perfect, but I want to have a certain layout, especially with um, those roads um, behind me there. And this was the only way to do what I wanted, and I think the layout turned out pretty good. Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm just gonna reset it to one. I don't know if this changes anything. It still says one lap on the top left. But let's start it. Also, I'm gonna keep an eye on the fuel gauge here. 
because I would like to see if we can actually do free laps here. I've done a bit of testing on the TWL server recently and it seemed like this car would only be able to do two laps without refueling. Which might open the doors for a different type of event. Because it could be kind of funny setting this to maybe six laps. Everybody needs to bring three cars and just discard from every two laps because they couldn't do another lap with it anyways. So like a tandem race. In a way. But yeah, I've also done a race in this, uh, or when I did the race in this yesterday, um, the other guy was actually driving a Tuscan, I think with the um, 240 horsepower V8, and I was driving a fully upgraded uh, Lobo. And they were pretty neck and neck, so there could be some uh, weird multi-class thing to be done. Or more, not really like multi-class, but more like... Um, some weird uh, combinations. <laughs> and they have a Lobo without the trailer is pretty good around here. Yeah, be careful here because there's a little, a little cliff to the left. Then again, most of the track has an open cliff at least to one side. But yeah, this thing flows pretty well, and while it was quite a bit of work, I basically needed to increase every checkpoint size. I think it turned out pretty well in the end. <coughs> and yeah, some of the checkpoints, especially for turning off at different intersections, once again, the major point of um, editing was making those look uh, how I want them to, but I think it's it's going pretty well here, and I should eventually also submit them to the um, uh, track database from the TWL server for future events. But I think if we get the option to do the whole um, track editing a bit more um, conveniently, preferably through in-game means. I might still make um, some of the checkpoints a bit wider. It doesn't all make sense where you can miss some of them. But right now, as it is through the text editing, if I was to do the stuff, it would be a major headache to get right. Stuff like that one could be a bit uh, wider, for example. Oh, that's not looking good. Yeah, in the end they are already um, pretty wide as is. So it should be okay. It's just that if I was to do the last few percent to make this thing as perfect as it can be through the whole text edit editing thing, it would be so much more of a pain. For the finer details you really want um, the changes to be immediately visible in the game. And not just to do a bit of guesswork if it would work, if you maybe move one of the checkpoints a meter further to the west or something. And then you have to insert the whole uh, track back into the game. Then just go to the checkpoint, see if it works out, and then do further editing if necessary. It's just, it's a whole lot of work and I can understand if people don't want to do it. But I think, in the end, this is actually going to help out the text immensely. So if you may be planning on just doing like a one-off event and never use the thing again, just doing something spontaneous for example, then yeah, the in-game options allow you to do so very quickly and decently well. But if you really want something that's, get, that's getting played over the next few months multiple times, 
putting in the additional effort, at least in my opinion, is worth it. You know what? Since I have a completely different setup on the other car apart from the same engine in both parts, and we will do a comparison run. So let me get back to the starting area with this one and then we'll see how this one can handle the whole track. Also I forgot to check the final tally on the, um, uh, on the other um, Neo for the, uh, for the fuel. I think it might be a bit too far but let's see. Yep, a few meters. Now this should be pretty good, so I can just start it right away. Ready, start, and let's get ready to go. I really need to buy a new chair. I think you can hear the cracking in the background. If I move um, slightly wrongly, the whole thing is just gonna fall apart, it sounds like. But yeah, rally wheels definitely grip much better off-road, as you would expect from two. And while the quarry is overall smooth enough that you don't need a full rally suspension setup, I think this is also going to help out in a few um, places here. But yeah, from what I can tell right now, I would definitely go for off-road wheels for an event here. Maybe on the street version of the car that I made. Should be alright. But yeah, also just being on the more slidey tires, it's kind of fun in its own right. But then this is definitely much more controlled. I've seen something on the Trello about split times and I would really like to see those implemented as well. Oh, that was a bit of a bumpy way down. But it remains to be seen what we can get before they put this out of testing. I'm a bit afraid it will be too soon again, but I kind of hope they take their time this time around. I mean, what we have here already is pretty good, but oh, yeah. I hope they see it through until we have um, the best version that it reasonably could be at this point, and then take it forward. And also, of course, increase the checkpoint limit. 50 is good enough for tracks like this. I think I'm in the high 30s or something, like 37, 38. But for a lot of other things that I would like to do, it's not gonna be enough. And to be clear, and I've gotten caught out for it, rightfully so, on my um, video where I showed you guys that uh, long track going around uh, Jijo Island. I wasn't really effective with my checkpoint placement there. It was just basically first draft on what I could place on the, um, yeah, on the whole map there. If I went through and just did a few adjustments, checked out where the exact placement was, uh, just in-game, instead of looking it through the map screen. Things would have been different, but it was also my first one after coming back from not making tracks for like, I don't know how many years at this point. I used to do a lot in GTA Online and also on the 
custom racing server I was part of, but at some point I just kind of stopped. It got boring at a point, there were a few issues with the community, and in the end I just didn't feel like doing it anymore. Okay, that's 17 seconds quicker. We had a minor issue with um, this car, a major issue, and the other one, so... Yeah, I think the off-road wheels are definitely uh, positive overall. <coughs> and yeah, now I just have to make a proper um, setup for this in terms of the decals. I'm also hoping that we'll get another version of this exact um, side skirt. Because this one right now cannot be painted and it's kinda... Um, it's not really benefiting the look of a vehicle in my opinion. So getting a, a painted version would be really nice, but it depends if I want to implement it. I'm gonna have to see about it. But yeah, that's gonna be it for me for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your opinions on this whole thing. Um, when it comes to the game right now, as long as we still are in testing, I will likely stay on this version. And that means that most likely there are going to be more episodes like this, just about track building and all of that. Because it's the new thing and it's something that I'm kind of coming back to after so long away from this whole topic. So, yeah, I hope it doesn't get too boring, but I mean, what else am I going to do? <laughs> Lobo pallet uh, deliveries? I don't think so. <laughs> nah, it's cool, it's cool, but uh, yeah. This is definitely more in my wheelhouse. So thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Take care. Bye bye.